Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Katie, and welcome to our practice speaking out test. In today's lesson and speaking practice, it's designed to stimulate our out speaking practice test. Let's begin. What's your name, please? Hi, my name is Jessica. Nice to meet you. Hi, Jessica. May I have your ID? Yes, here it is. Thank you. And uh, I want to talk about, yes, let me show you. Okay, reading. Did you have a favorite book when you were a child? Yes, my favorite book growing up was The Little Prince. Mm -hmm. And I think it's such a great book for children to read. It teaches you so many um, values and just things that, a, a child should know growing up and it's also very entertaining and the pictures are really interesting and pretty I think it's very famous and there's a reason to that it's because it's a really good book okay very good how much reading do you do for work or studies for work not much um since I am in plastic surgery um most of the procedures are kind of repetitive so one good thing about that is that it's almost never changing. Like it's very set in stone what the doctor wants and what he doesn't want. So for work, I don't really have to do much reading. Okay, very good. What kinds of books do you read for pleasure? Um, I love reading fiction books, um, usually. But lately, I've been reading a lot of self-help self -help books and I've been really into that. They're very um, eye-opening and it just tells you a lot about yourself and it helps you discover things um, in your life that you you didn't have pers the right perspective of before and it kind of helps you do that. Okay, very good. Do you prefer to read a newspaper or a magazine online or even buy a copy? Definitely um, a magazine. I do not remember the last time I picked up a, a newspaper, um, probably for school, just to like cut out news or pictures or something. But I don't think I ever read like an actual newspaper. I usually just get my news online. But I do I do like reading like um, magazines once in a while. Yeah. Okay, very good. Now let's move on to about computers. Do you ever use a computer? Yes, every day. <laughs> I do. Um, usually, yes, for school, but also um, to watch movies or just, you know, investigating things that I need. I think it's easier to look up things on the computer than on your phone. All right. So, How do you usually get online? Um, Like through social media, do you mean? Yes. Or, oh, okay. So I, I stay online through, I use a lot of TikTok, which is really the hype right now. It's very popular. Um, I think it's a very addictive app. It's kind of dangerous because time goes by really fast. So you lose a lot of time pretty quickly. But I think that's like the most that I use right now. Do you think it is important to learn how to use a computer? Yes, definitely. Um, mostly now it days since a lot of teachers actually require everything to be like not in books anymore you kind of just need like a tablet or a computer where you can keep all of your books and if it's, it's kind of just more convenient because you have you don't have to be carrying around like 10 different books you have all your books like in one place um so i do think it's really important uh to know how to use a computer very good, very good. Let's move on to the topic about dreams. Do you often have dreams when you sleep? Um, I wouldn't say often, but I do have dreams once in a while. Um, there, I don't remember much of the dreams. I just know that they're very bizarre, and and yes, I don't remember much. Like I. As soon as I wake up, I can remember some of it. But um, as the day goes on, I kind of just forget what it was about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think dreams are important to remember? Sometimes. I mean, 
I do believe in, in like the hidden messages and dreams and what they can mean. So in that way, I do. But definitely, if it's a nightmare, then I don't think anybody wants to remember that. So I think only good dreams are worth remembering. Okay. All right. Now let's go to part number two. In part number two, you have to speak about one to two minutes and uh, you have a preparations for about a minute. Here's your pen and paper. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can organize your sense and even structure your senses. And I'll be giving you a card. You have one minute to prepare. All right. You may now begin speaking. Um, One big city that I would really love to visit is Chicago. Um, I just think that from the videos that I've seen and the pictures that it's such a pretty um, place to visit. I recently went on a trip to New York and so um, online, um, the algorithm started showing me videos of like New York and different cities that look like New York. And they basically, somebody compared Chicago to New York saying that it's like a prettier, cleaner version of New York. Um, so that really caught my attention. And so I started looking into Chicago and it's such a pretty place that I, that I think would be worth visiting. Um, I would get there on a plane, obviously, because it's just um, faster and easier. Um, I would love to do sightseeing there. Um, I'm not really well informed about the places to sightsee there, but I would love to just get to know the place. Um, and yeah, ever since I saw the videos, like I started asking around and some friends have been there and they do recommend it. They say it's very beautiful and Yes, I, I would love to go there. Okay, very good. Now let's go to part number three. We'll have a discussion topics. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about visiting cities on holiday. What are the most interesting things to do while visiting cities on holiday? Oh, wow. Well, I was just talking about this with my mom when I was in New York, and she was telling me, that when she went, it was around Christmas time. And that it's just so beautiful because there's at the Rockefeller Center, there's this huge tree, like very huge tree. And that it's just beautiful. And people just stand there for like a long time and stare at the trees and they walk through the street and there's like lights everywhere. And that it's just very, um, you know, wonderful to see like the holiday spirit there in in New York um so yeah she was telling me that um someday she will take me which I was like oh maybe this year but you know we never know but I hope so because I would love to to see you know the Christmas spirit what the Christmas spirit is like somewhere that's not in my city because I've always spent um the Christmas like the holidays here in my city so right. yes. why can it be expensive to visit cities on holiday? Well, mainly because since people do want to get out of town sometimes for for the holidays, especially since it's like their vacation time, um, I think that it's a high priced um time. So, so yeah, the the planes are more expensive. The hotels are more expensive um and just getting everywhere in general not only planes but also like taking the bus can be expensive as well um obviously cheaper than a plane but still expensive so i think it is because um just the holidays in general make everything much more expensive do you think it's better to visit cities alone or 
in a group with friends? Well, speaking from experience, I can see the pros and cons of both sides. Um, there was a day in during my vacation where I um, my friend wasn't feeling well. So I basically spent like more than half of it alone. And it was just kind of a breath of fresh air because you don't have to be asking like anybody like, oh, do you want to do this? Or do you want to go here? Because you can just go. You can just say, well, I want to go there. So you just go there. And it's just kind of amazing to, to be able to do that. But I don't think I would because I would be really scared of like, being alone someplace that I don't know that I could get lost or something could happen. But I do see the benefits in in traveling alone. Great, great. Now let's move on about the growth of cities. Why mm -hmm. have cities increased in size in the recent years? Well, I believe that, for example, here in Tijuana, where I live, a lot of the people who actually live here are not from here. So for example, like um, only a sm small percentage of us were actually born here. A lot of people migrate from the South to be closer to the North, um, mostly because they want to get into the United States. But when they don't, or the people who aren't able to, they stay here in this border town. So a lot of the times that's why cities like this, like border towns are more populated than other cities. But yeah, for like that's just an example that I that I could think of. Okay. What are the challenges created by ever growing cities? Well, overpopulation can cause a lot of um challenges such as traffic. I know that is one problem that we're having here which before it used to take me about 25, maximum of 30 minutes to get home. Right now it can sometimes, not every day, but it can take me up to 45 minutes to an hour, which is very exhausting because um, it, it didn't used to be like that. And so I think that's one of the issues. Another one of the issues is since a lot of Americans that live near the border know that it is cheaper to live here um they come to live here so that it's cheaper and so our rent prices are being um elevated so some of the people who want to rent now um can't afford it and they have to go deeper like all right thank you farther. in what ways do you think cities of the future will be different to cities today um i definitely think um that we could better our transportation systems um especially here in Mexico I know that in the United States it's such a good transportation system um people get really fast everywhere everything is so clean um the streets are clean um it's just very different in comparison, like living in Mexico and living in the United States. Since I have done both, I know that, you know, there's a lot of things in the United States that are much better than here. Um, but I do think that we have a lot to improve on and I'm hopeful that we will in the future. That is the end of our speaking cast. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.